Hey everyone, uh, this is Alex USA Days. So we're gonna go through 10 questions, most common questions that asked during QA interview. So I actually have 50 of those questions and answers in one file. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna go through the first 10 and just read the notes at the end, kind of to summarize uh, how you can prepare better for the interview. But if you want to access to all 50 questions and answers, I'm going to add it into my Patreon. Uh, the link is in the description for the video. And the tier one starts with $2 a month. So it will be under the very first tier, Quality Cadets. So, and obviously going to be accessible to all other Patreon tiers. It will be just a downloadable PDF files. We have all the questions and answers. So let's go through the 10 uh, first questions and answers in this video. Okay, so this is actually my Patreon page and it's Alex USA Days. Again, you can find it in the uh, description for this video. So the questions and answers are going to be available right here with Quality Cadets was the very first year. The whole 50 uh, questions and answers for the interview preparation. All right, for this video, let's go ahead with the first 10 questions. Uh, so. Question number one, and it's a very often asked, tell me about yourself. So it's expected that you're gonna generally kind of talk about you, uh, the QA experience, why? Well, so kind of to start the conversation to see, you know, how well you're adequate, you know, how are you gonna fit or not? Normally you just wanna say that I'm passionate about quality assurance and I'm eager to explore new opportunities in the field. I've worked as a QA engineer both part-time and full-time or either one or maybe you did QA freelance and I'm dedicated to continuous learning and improvement. So it's just kind of a general introduction, kind of sanity check, right? Uh, second question, why are you looking for a new opportunity? This is not a sanity check uh, to see if you're going to be a good fit, like what is the real reason why you're looking for a new job if you like got fired or anything like that. Again, very general question. You want to provide like very general answer. Uh, you want to say my current role lacks growth opportunities and my QA contract is ending without an extension or something to that sort. So maybe you're just looking for new opportunities or your contract is expiring, there's no extension. I'm actively seeking a company where I can continue to enhance my skills and contribute to quality software development. Uh, then one of the questions they might ask, why us? So why our company? Normally you want to say something good about the industry, that you're involved in the industry, you're familiar with the industry, you're interested in it. So um, I would answer that I have a genuine interest in your products and have thoroughly researched your company's mission and culture on your website. It aligns with my values and I believe I can make meaningful contribution here. All right, uh, another thing that is normally asked, like where do you see yourself in five years? Uh, this is a question that could be a little bit tricky for some people. They think, okay, you know, I start as QA engineer and then I'm going to be a developer or I'm going to be a QA manager. Um, don't really go there. What is most of the time is expected from this uh, question if you're committed to the QA field, if you're going to work in the QA field. So something in terms of, you know, I'm still going to work as a QA, just going to grow my experience as a QA engineer is totally accepted response. So I would say um, in five years, I envision myself as a senior QA engineer with an expanded skill set. I'm committed to continuous growth in the field and contributing to the success of the company. That's pretty much it. Uh, question number five, tell me about your debugging process. So my debugging process involves identifying the issue, isolating the problem and providing detailed information to the development team to reproduce the problem. Uh, one of the approaches that you might want to use when you're debugging something, if it's a complex issues, you're going to break this issues into smaller parts until you kind of identify the root cause. Okay. Um, why choose QA and what do you love about it? Or in general, why choose QA, right? So you can say that I transitioned into full-time QA work after enjoying it as a part-time freelancer. So for example, you worked on one of the web pages that I provide in my video on how to get QA experience. So maybe you like you worked at the U test. And you can say I worked at the U test as a part time as a gig. I really enjoyed it and I decided to make it my full time career, right? 
What I love about QA is the analytical and problem solving aspects. It's like solving puzzles to ensure product quality. I also like making an impact and improving product quality. So it's always good if you you know, contribute to something and you feel like you're making a difference. Um, tell me about positive negative testing. So question number seven. Uh, positive testing checks if a system performs as expected under normal conditions, while negative testing examines how the system handles unexpected or invalid inputs or conditions. For example, a positive test case would be creating an account with expected password complexity, so, you know, at least eight characters, one capital letter, like a special symbol, one number. Uh, a, neg a negative test case would be creating an account with a password that does not match minimum character length. So attempting to create an account that requires eight characters and a password and you provide only seven, right? That would be a negative case. Uh, tell me about end-to-end -end testing. So what is end-to-end -end testing, right? End-to-end -end testing evaluates the entire system or application by focusing on user scenarios to ensure all integrated components work together seamlessly. For example, buying products on Amazon. That would include login, product search, adding it to the card, successful checkout, and order confirmation. Um, tell me about regression testing. So regression testing involves retesting the existing functionality to ensure recent changes haven't introduced any new defects or affected existing features. Normally, QA would be expected to build a comprehensive regression test suite that would run on uh, new deployments. So something that you go over to make sure that all your critical functionality is still in place, everything working as expected. And the last one that we're gonna cover in the video, tell me about your team. So you can say I have had privilege of working with diverse teams and I value effective communication, collaboration and knowledge sharing to achieve common goals. You can talk about your team composition. So how many QA engineers are there? How many developers? What is your management like? Is there a QA lead? Is there a QA manager? What is your, do you work with like product manager or business analyst? Uh, if you're doing like QA freelance stuff, you can say I, the whole team is kind of on the freelance and we're managed through this application and uh, you know we get t assigned tasks and test cases we're looking for bugs and test scenarios we have to run through and you can mention like sort of products that you actually worked on so it's just kind of general um, discussion of your experience and team composition to to kind of see if you know you you know what you're talking about all right, so this is 10 questions we covered in the video. Uh, the rest 40 questions, so total 50 questions is going to be available in my Patreon. The link in the description. It's the same name as the channel, so Alex USA Days. Now let's go to uh, the summary here. So for the summary, I just wanted to note something. So one thing that I want you to remember is to be friendly and smile during interview. So um go ahead and prepare yourself for the interview like if you know that you get nervous uh if you feel that okay you know i'm stressed out a little bit just go and stay in front of a mirror and say hi you know smile to yourself a little bit just feel <laughs> kind of feel the positivity um so that's gonna help it's definitely gonna help so uh normally it's expected that you know QA person is going to be a long-term addition to the team, to the culture, to the process. So they want someone who will be a good fit, uh, who would be a positive fit, contributor to the team, will be working well as a team. So smiling definitely helps. Now you can practice in front of mirror prior to the interview. So no joke, just go ahead and practice. Uh, another thing that is important if you do stress out a lot, like preparing to the interview process and you get worried during the interview, uh, try to somehow, you know, uh, work that out. I suggest just do like meditation, spend 15 minutes before the actual interview, kind of meditate, relax, or do something that, you know, you find relaxing, kind of ease your mind. It's going to help you with your communication. It's going to help you with your soft skills. It's going to help you to focus answering the questions, you know, and, uh, if you're going to be overly too nervous during the interview process, it's just going to might kill the vibe and, you know, not going to, team is not going to proceed with you just because you were just too stressed out during the interview. So just take some time to actually uh, ease and relax a little bit. Uh, and the last thing, but it's 
I think it's very important because it can be like a determining question during the interview process. Um, you might get asked about the company. Uh, so they're kind of deciding, okay, you look good. Even if you go through the whole interview process and you answered everything good and technical side of all the terminologies, uh, they'll ask you, so what do you think about our company? What do you think about the product? Uh, do you like our mission? Do you like our values? And if they'll see that you never actually went to their webpage, you didn't take time to read about the company, you didn't take time to read about the product, you didn't spend time, you know, learning the values, the culture, just that might be like a, a big no, because you didn't spend time, like the team will feel that you didn't spend enough effort figuring out what you're going to work on, uh, you didn't prepare yourself enough for the interview. So make sure when you go on an interview, check the company's webpage, read about the company, what they do, what their core values, if there's like a a special statement that they have out, something that they feel it's important. So uh, just be aware of that, okay? So hopefully it is helpful. This was Alex USA Days. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.